Pew pew pew, lasers. This is the O-Tour Laser Master 3, and in this video, we're gonna set it up and learn how to use it together. Right away, before we even get started here, let me know in the comments what you would make with a laser engraver or cutter, because I cannot wait to get this thing together and start making cool stuff, and I would love some ideas. Now, assembly on this machine, was really easy. I think there was only a total of about 10 screws, including the set screws. The main frame went together really nicely. Everything fit really well. And this thing boasts a 400 by 400 millimeter build area. And this thing is super fast. It can do up to 20,000 millimeters per minute. And it's also got a ton of safety features that we're going to get into later. Even the belt drive was super easy to install. This thing can even be connected to via Wi-Fi. It has a 10 watt laser module that's super powerful. The electrical was simple and clean. Assembly on this thing was super straightforward and easy, so don't be intimidated at all. It was really easy to put together. Man, this thing has got some quality components. The fit and finish of this is really, really nice. Right away, I got a few questions. What type of software do I use and what do I put under this thing so I just don't burn up my table? I did a little bit of research and there is a few things out there in terms of software. There's a free app out there called Laser Explorer that O2 came up with. I'm going to download that on my phone, but there's some more um, comprehensive software out there. There are some free versions and some pay versions. I think the free version being Laser, Gerbil or something like that. And it seems like everybody is using a piece of software called Lightburn. So I think that I'm going to go ahead and pay the little extra and get the Lightburn software. It seems a little more user friendly. Also, there are some files on this flash drive that I need to install on my computer. And then I need to put the SD card in this printer before I can get things going. That's what we're going to do now. We're going to get this on the computer and we're going to get going here. So what I decided to do here was use this sheet of 5.8 MDF and then just place the printer right down on top of it and let it burn this up instead of my table. I know that light burn has a grid pattern and I found a file that'll burn that actual pattern onto this board because I feel like that'll help me place the items that I want to engrave in the right location. I designed and 3D printed some brackets to guide the legs to make sure that I place the laser down in the same spot every time. These files are available on my Patreon and this is the perfect opportunity to thank the members of my Patreon. You guys are rock stars. I appreciate it so much. If anybody is interested in my Patreon, the link is in the description below. It's a great way to support the channel. I marked the locations of the legs and screwed the brackets to the MDF. Fit like a glove. I then attached the laser to the laptop via USB connection. It has a really cool safety feature like a key switch and an emergency stop button. It also has a really nice focus guide to make sure the laser is set at the proper height. And then I loaded in the laser burn software. This was super easy to do. I just followed the step-by-step -step process, named it Laser Master 3, set the build area to 400 by 400. Changed a couple other parameters like putting the uh, reading system in millimeters. I enabled the laser fire button and laser on when framing. Then I loaded in the grid pattern. It came preset what already parameters are cut, so I just set it up and started the burner. But my laser collided with some electrical that was in the way and it actually stopped the laser. One of the safety features. All I had to do was move the clips 
and then I was back in business. So this is a perfect opportunity to talk about the seven safety features of this printer. It has a safety lock with a removable key, an active position protection, sloping position protection, exposure duration detection and limitation, voltage and current safety control systems, host computer watch dogging, and an emergency stop switch. So they really considered safety when building this machine. Then I threw in my logo, framed it up, Yep, the grid was working and said, hey, might as well burn it. And this was my first test piece. A little piece of wood that come with the laser. Hey, how about a thumbs up for my first successful burn? Now that the laser is set up and working, this is facility D20. We're always making cool stuff, so let's get at it. I started with this notebook, measured it up, and draw a rectangle in light burn. I then filled it with all kinds of D&D related images, set my parameters to 15,000 speed at 60% power, deleted the rectangle, and started the burn. One note I wanna make here guys, make sure you always wear eye protection and make sure you always know what you're burning. Some things can produce harmful fumes and smoke that you don't wanna be breathing in. Make sure it's safe, do a little research before you start to burn. Then I burned some wooden canvases, and my son is a really big fan of Diary of a Wimpy Kid, so I went ahead and made a sign for his room. And my youngest son loves Super Mario Brothers, so I made a sign for him too. I couldn't leave the wife out, so using some bamboo, I engraved a cutting board for our camper. Then I decided to try my hand at some glass. So I had this cheap picture frame and took the glass out. Measured it up, dried the rectangle on light burn, dragged and dropped the Space Marine image in there. Set my parameters at 3000 by 90% power. And like I figured what happened, just burned straight through it. But I discovered if you paint it black, and definitely burn it. I also put a piece of ceramic tile under it just so I wouldn't burn the crap out of my sacrificial board because my OCD kicked in. Anyway, with a few more tweaks to the settings, I think I can dial this in. Next up, I laser burn the coffee mug. Because hey, coffee for the emperor, am I right? This brings me to the sponsor of today's video and I am absolutely pumped for it. Antimatter Games and LV427 Designs are teaming up to produce Deep Waters Sunken Citadel, a 3D printable tabletop game for two or more players launching on January 30th, 2023. This adventure game is set in the Uncharted Realms world and is compatible with all other Deep Wars products and models from Dark Sword Miniatures. The Sunken Citadel is an underwater research station that lost contact with the surface kingdoms after a mysterious experiment went awry. One of the players controls a warband of mercenary divers and pirates, the Breach Team, set in to regain control of the station. The other player controls the invaders, corrupted remnants of the station crew, and terrifying beings of the ethereal void that have taken over the station. Wild creatures also lurk in and around the station, hunting down any members of the Breach Team or invaders. This Kickstarter's box set is going to include a ton of stuff, from miniatures to tiles to rule books, dice, markers, templates, everything you're going to need to play this. In addition to that, the team at LV427 Designs have completely designed the entire structure using printable STL files. That's going to be a part of this Kickstarter too. I'm so hyped about this, you got to check this out. I've got a link to the Kickstarter in the description. Now that I got the basic understanding of laser engraving, I'm going to try to do something super crazy and go ahead and laser engrave a Space Marine on my special edition Warhammer 40k rulebook. I really hope I don't mess this thing up. I very carefully measured the book exactly and placed it perfectly as I could. Yeah. 
set my focus just right. That guide is really handy. It framed out exactly where I needed it to. And then I started the burn. And I knew right away I was in trouble. It seems this rule book is coated with some sort of plastic film. You can see here it burned right away. And I was left with something I did not want. So I tried a new trick. I decided to paint it all in with a sharpie, set the image to a negative, and burn it in again. And at the end of the day, <laughs> well, uh, I definitely messed it up. It didn't quite go as planned. I thought that it was gonna turn out like that D&D journal I did and be a very nice black and gray image, but it didn't quite work out like that. Anyway, you live, you learn. Now, this is the real reason I'm excited about this laser. I'm gonna make some laser cut terrain. So let's get into that. Light burn has a really cool feature that if you load in a PNG or a vector image, you can trace the outline of that image. So then I use this to try my first burn. I set it at 300 speed at 100 power and I started the burn. But I didn't have much luck. I quickly discovered that if I raise the piece, the burn works way better. Then at 200 speed and 100% power, I burn right through the 5 millimeter plywood. Then I moved on to testing some MDF and I found the perfect settings for that as well. Then it was time to build a bridge. So I cut out two side sections and a flat piece. And I found this file online for free. And this thing popped out perfectly clean. And I'm gonna be using this bridge for a really cool project coming up on my channel. And I can't wait. Then I found some material that likes to burn perfectly. But no, seriously guys, go ahead and smash that subscribe button. It makes me really happy to see this facility growing. It's super cool. Now, I did find this tip from my buddy, Narb Mace. He done a video a while back on laser engraving some EVA foam, and I could not wait to try this myself. So I loaded in some 40K tiles, set the parameters 20,000 speed by 60% power, and started the burn and this just blew me away. This works so cool. So I had to try it for D&D &D and I burned myself in some nice dungeon tiles. And even a brick wall pattern. Now, I can see this application being so useful in my dioramas and terrain making. I cannot wait to see what the future brings now that I got this tool at my disposal. This was just awesome. This was my first time working with a laser and I got to say I really enjoyed my experience with it. Otour makes a great machine. I've got all the information to this link below in the description. You can go on their website and check it out. They've got a great price on it now. Some of the shortcomings and downfalls that I found with this machine, I noticed that there were accessories to take care of it. There's an enclosure to help with the smoke and fume issues. There's adjustable legs to get it up higher when you need it. And there's even a roller to help with those like cups and mugs and stuff like that when you're trying to engrave cylindrical objects. I really hope you enjoyed this video and got to learn a little bit about lasers with me. It was great having you here. Check out some more awesome videos on my channel and I'll catch you on the next one.